Maximum likelihood estimation is one of the most commonly used estimation principles in research. Understanding this principle, why it's not exactly necessary for you to do your analysis, it's very useful because sometimes when you get to more complicated models, the estimation can fail and to able to troubleshoot and fix the problem, you have to understand what the computer is trying to do when it attempts maximum likelihood estimation. To understand maximum likelihood estimation, we need to first understand a couple of concepts from probability. The first two concepts are probability density and cumulative probability. When we have the p-value, the p-value quantifies the probability, the cumulative probability, what is the area under the curve here, and the area quantifies how likely or how probable a, a value of less than minus one is from a normal distribution centered at one, at zero and a standard deviation of one. Then the probability density tells us how probable a value of minus one is compared to any other value of the distribution. So uh, probability, cumulative probability tells us what is the probability of getting a value or more extreme from the distribution and probability density tells us what is the, pr the uh, probability related to others. So this is not any particular, any probability of any particular value because the normal distribution has unlimited range. So uh, getting an exact value is pretty much impossible because there are so many different alternatives. But this tells us the relative probability of getting this value compared to, for example, this value or, or that value. And uh, we are a lot more likely to get the value of minus one than a value of minus two, and we are more likely to get the value of zero, at the, which is the mean, than the value of minus one. We also need to understand the probability of independent events. And the independent events probability are also highlights why we need to assume independence of observations. The idea of independent events is that if you have two events, we have two dice here, so we have die one, the first die receives values from one to, to six, and we have the second die here receives values from one to six as well. And uh, these dice are independent, so throwing the first die doesn't affect the throw of the second die. And uh, therefore all possible 36 combinations are equally likely to occur because these are fair dice. So if we have a, a value of one from the first die that is one out of six and to get a value of, of one from the second die that is one out of six again and the total probability of two ones is one out of six times one out of six which is one out of 36 as this figure illustrates. So the probability of two independent events is the product of the probabilities of both events here. And this is an important uh, principle in maximum likelihood estimation. Let's now go on and explain the actual estimation principle. Assume that we have a normal distribution here, which has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. To get values of two, three and four from, the from this population, the probability density for 2 is 0 0.05, for 3 is 0 0.004, and for 4 it's 0 0.001. And uh, the cumulative probability density is the product of these two values. So the, this value here is the product of that probability density and that probability density. This value here is the product of that probability density plus that probability density. We multiply these probability densities together because these are independent observations from the same distribution. So the total probability density is the product of these individual probability densities. So getting values of two, three and four, this probability density quantifies the likelihood of those three values compared to any other three values that we could get. So these probability densities are very small numbers. Because there's one numbers, it is typically more convenient to work with logarithms. And uh, the, when we work with logarithms, we extend uh, the table by having uh, the log here. So we have the logarithm and then we have uh, the 
cumulative logarithm, which is the sum of these logarithms. So there are, why we take a sum of these logarithms is that the logarithm of a, of a product is the sum of the logarithms of those two components that go into the product. We also call these now likelihoods because we are trying to estimate the, uh, the mean of this. We uh, no longer know the mean of this uh, st normal distribution, rather we try to estimate it from the data. So assuming that the mean is zero, then the likelihood of the data is this small number here and the log likelihood, which is the logarithm of the likelihood, is minus 70. How maximum likelihood estimation works is that we try different values for the mean. For example, now mean is zero, we try 0 0.01 and we check if the log likelihood becomes larger. If it does, then we know that the mean is in that direction, the actual maximum likelihood estimate of the population mean. So we move the normal distribution sideways a bit and we move it to the right this time. We can see here that the, the probability the densities of all these observations increased because uh, the distribution is now closer to these observations. And uh, also the log likelihood became larger. We can still increase the log likelihood or the cumulative likelihood by moving the distribution right a bit more. So we move it to right a bit more and uh, the log likelihood became larger or closer to zero. This is nearly always a negative number. So increasing a negative number means that the number gets closer to zero. And we can still move it right a bit to increase the likelihood even more. And uh, this is the maximum likelihood estimate. This is the maximum likelihood that we can get by shifting the mean. So having a normal distribution with standard deviation of one, the, we can't get any larger likelihood values. We, when we set the mean at zero, that is the maximum likelihood. If we shift it right a bit or left a bit, then the likelihood would decrease. And the value of mean here that maximizes the likelihood is called the maximum likelihood estimate. The maximum likelihood estimate are is found by maximizing the likelihood function or the log likelihood function. We can also uh, express the likelihood as a function of the mean. So uh, here is the likelihood function. We can see that the likelihood of getting those three observations is pretty much zero here and it's pretty much zero here. So uh, the likelihood peaks only when we're very close to the correct values. When we have the log likelihood, it looks a lot nicer curve because it's uh, it actually goes to some direction instead of being flat, even if we are further from the actual correct population value. So that's one reason why we use logarithms for maximum likelihood estimates. So in practice, we set some starting value, let's set it at zero for the mean. Then we look which direction does the likelihood go up. We see that it goes up when we go right. Then we tr go right a bit, we try here. We calculate the likelihood here, we check which direction we should go, we calculate it here and then we discover that if we go further the likelihood starts to decrease, then we declare that this is our maximum likelihood estimate. So that's the basic principle of maximum likelihood estimation, trying to estimate mean of normal distribution with standard deviation of one from the three observations. In other videos I will use this same principle for more complicated examples.